Hi everyone. So the franchisor has given you a copy of their disclosure document. Often they'll do that twice. Sometimes I'll give you a template one early on in your investigations and then as you move through and, and accept the offer of a franchise, you'll get a specific one relevant to the business that you want to enter into. Now, I must stress, it's really important that you get good legal advice around your disclosure document and take it to a lawyer who actually understands franchising, that's done a number of them, uh, understands the franchising code. That's, that's the first thing um, because they will give you the critical legal advice. But there are certainly some things in there that I want to draw your attention to uh, that will help you significantly. One of the important ones is, I think it's section 10 to 12, which deals with the supply of goods. You want to know, do I have to buy everything off the franchise or, uh, and if I don't, or, or otherwise, how do I get someone approved as a potential supplier to my business? In there, we'll also deal with online sales, particularly important these days. And quite often you may be excluded from online sales, but you just need to understand that uh, or if you're included, how does that actually work? The big one is section 14. Section 14 lays out all the different payments that you're gonna to need to make, including getting into the franchise and also on an ongoing operational basis. Now, there'll be broad ranges and that's because the franchise all has to allow for all the different types of franchise operation. So electricity, for example, they may say you're gonna spend between five and $10,000 a year. And that's because a very small operation that serves mostly takeaway, for example, may have very low electricity costs versus a much larger one with a big seating area that's air conditioned with lots of lighting or lots of baking equipment or whatever. So they have to cover that range, but it at least pins it down for you and then you can go and talk to other franchisees or look at the financial modeling and work out, okay, given that I'm operating, opening, planning to open a large business, I should go to the high end of the scale or the low end of the scale. So you'll get a good understanding of that. Another one is section 21, which is the financial reporting on the franchisor, and a lot of people overlook that. So they either have to give you two years of financial statements, or if they're larger, an audit report from, a, from a, an external auditor. Please make sure you have a read of that. If necessary, get your accountant to explain it to you. But there are plenty of times where unfortunately franchisors have hit a brick wall and fallen over, uh, and doesn't necessarily mean the end of the franchise business, but it certainly creates a lot of pain and anguish. So you want to get a good understanding of, of the franchisor's track record and are they gonna be sustainable and be around for you. But probably some of the biggest value comes at the end in the Enetics, or however you pronounce that name, um, which is where they have to give you a listing of the existing franchisees and franchisees that have left the system for a variety of different reasons, good or bad, over the last three years, and their contact information. That's where you get the information and you can reach out and contact people that are currently in the system or have just left the system and ask about their experiences and actually validate some of that financial information that you receive. So that can be some of the most valuable part of that disclosure statement. The other thing, not in the disclosure statement, but to bear in mind is that most franchise agreements will essentially tell you that you must operate the franchise as per the operating system, which is contained in the operating manuals and the policies of the franchisor. When you get into that final disclosure period and you have the 14 days where you can pull out of the deal, that's a good time to say, hey, can I have a look at those operations manuals and policy manuals and see what's actually in them and get an understanding for them because that's actually what you're gonna to have to abide by and that's what they're gonna hold you accountable for. Understandably, they generally won't share with those with you in advance because they're confidential, that's part of their IP. But once you get into those final stages of disclosure, it's more than fair and reasonable that they give you exposure to that, even if you need to go into their premises or go into a franchised operation and actually have a look at the manuals there. Um, anyway, that's a little bit about disclosure agreements. Hope that helps. Uh, again, if you've got any other questions about franchising you'd like me to talk about and share my personal thoughts, more than happy to do so, just drop me a line. Bye for now.